Hello and welcome to Screen Fever. My name is Adam Barnard and I'm joined by Jackson Smith today to discuss a brand new Mission Impossible Fallout trailer. Mission Impossible Fallout is the sixth film in the ongoing Mission Impossible film series and it is written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie. It had a bit of a troubled production, which we're going to get to in our main discussion, so it's been uh, in the works for quite a long time. Uh, It also overlapped with other movies like Justice League, where there were cast disputes on who could act in what at what time and with what facial hair, which we'll also reference later, <laughs> which is fun. But um, I'm excited because I know Christopher McQuarrie is a very intentional and precise filmmaker. And especially in the last few movies, he's really gotten to hone his craft. And this uh, this one, Mission Impossible Fallout, just looks so precise and so um, well orchestrated in terms of the actions, action and the dynamics and the plot. Uh, it, it has me still excited even after six films. So what about you? I'm just excited to see what that mustache finally looks like in action. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what it doesn't look like in Justice yeah, League uh, when they CGI yeah, yeah. it. For for those of you who don't know, basically Paramount Paramount and Warner Brothers got into a bit of a a bit of a squabble over Henry Cavill's facial hair uh, when he was required to go back and do reshoots for Justice League. Um, basically, Paramount <laughs> didn't allow him to shave, so they had to digitally remove his mustache. In Justice League, which resulted in probably one of the funniest, most unintentionally funny visual effect gags in recent years. Oh, yeah. The good news is that everything I've seen of Henry Cavill in this movie, mustache or not, looks so cool. He looks like probably the coolest bad guy this franchise has had and Mission Impossible has a good history with villains as well. It does, yeah. Because uh, dating back to even like J.J. Abrams' film with Fee- uh, with Philip Seymour Hoffman, yeah. uh, it, it was – I think each time they work hard to bring in someone who's not just a no pun intended mustache twirling villain. <laughs> um, sorry, it's low-hanging fruit here. Uh, I got to have fun. You know, got to loosen up. Um, no, yeah, every time they bring in a villain, they're trying to innovate the plot and, you know, not just have a white hat and a black hat, a good guy and a bad guy. Uh, it, it's blending um, motivations in a morally ambiguous uh, intelligence and espionage world. And yeah, Henry Cavill just has this electric, sharp presence about him. Like, I almost want to pause the frame every time I get to him in, in the trailer because what they've done with his look is just so cool. <laughs> well, and it's also going going off what you said about the black hat, white hat. I mean, at least, and again, we're just judging by the trailers here. I don't know what the actual movie is going to look like, but but it seems to be that his character is a CIA agent. So you have Ethan Hunt, who's IMF, and he's the main antagonist of the movie is somebody else from the American government. And I, I, I find that interesting. Uh, what I don't find interesting, and I, 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 after watching the trailer, I sort of went back and I looked at the summaries for the rest of the Mission Impossible movies because I was like, huh, they're going rogue again? And I realized the last three mission, the plot of the last three Mission Impossible movies was... Ethan and his team going rogue. And I'm like, as, as interesting of a development as Henry Cavill's character is, I, I, I'm sort of nonplussed to see this franchise taking kind of the same direction <laughs> it's been right. taking the last three movies. That's true. I, I guess I would say I'm going to wait to reserve judgment until I see the plot because That's trailers fair. have done a good yeah. job of concealing the true plot in the past. To that point, you know, the last movie was called Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. So, like, at some point, you're going to wonder, is this rogue fallout? Is this rogue? What's the seventh film going to be? Again, I do have to put faith in the director, Chris McQuarrie. This it's is really, the first yeah. time a director has done two Mission Impossible films, ever. Um, it, usually, they've switched up directors for every installment, and I guess... Chris McQuarrie connected with the franchise or they liked Rogue, Na- uh, Rogue Nation enough. Got like a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. Something really, really high. Yeah, yeah. yeah, really, really high, even for a crowd-pleasing blockbuster. Um, so he's, I, I think, going to 
cultivate something different. I trust him as an artist, I want to say. The other thing I'm always going to like about Mission Impossible movies is Tom Cruise. And that's yeah. not always the most popular thing. It seems like a very bland, basic thing to say. But like the dedication that this guy has to doing stunts and to putting a performance on, um, both in a creative character sense and a very physical action leading man sense, is second to none. And in his 50s, he's still doing it seemingly very well. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I can complain about the plot and the, the the lack of variety when it comes to the plot for these movies all I want. But at the end of the day, we're all going to see this because of Tom Cruise. He really has taken ownership of this franchise and is the big draw with it. And and if there's anything I'm, I'm getting a good sense of in this trailer, it's that he's not going to disappoint on the stunts front. Um, one of my, one of my favorite moments for this trailer is when, when he's talking to uh, Benji, uh, Simon Pegg's character on a Bluetooth and he like throws a chair through a window and, and he likes, is about to jump out the window and Benji's like, why, why aren't you going? Why aren't you going? He screams. He's like, I'm about to jump out a window. And like, (laughs) and like Simon Pegg says in the most casual way, like, Oh, okay. Right. Like this is just another day at work, (laughs) you know? And that's, and that's at the end of the day, that's why I go and see these movies. And that's why I'm excited for this one is because I just, you know, I think the characters have a good rapport with each other. You know, Tom Cruise is a lot of fun to watch most of the time. And, and this character in particular, just, has a real knack for <laughs> doing crazy things that are, are are fun and suspenseful to watch on a big screen. And in terms of new characters, there's a somewhat new addition, which is Rebecca Ferguson, who did a killer job in Rogue Nation. Yes. Oh, uh, she was probably the highlight or one of the highlights of that movie. Definitely. And it's going to be a bit of balance out to uh, Tom Cruise's masculine machismo and, and her very different vibe. It's still kind yeah. Complementary towards a, a kind of counter espionage film. Um, I think the franchise has done a good job of, of figuring out what works and bringing it back. You know, some yeah. franchises will do something great and then the next movie they'll take such a sharp left turn. You, you're just like, well, it's great that you're trying something different, but what about what worked last time that was new? Like, why can't we see more of that? And so there have been characters that have been added to the roster throughout the six films that are staying, like Simon Pegg's character who came on with J.J. Abrams' film because both of them are friends. Um, speaking of that stunt, you know, the one where he jumps out the window, uh, yeah. fun fact about production, Tom Cruise broke his uh, ankle or broke his foot during that stunt. Yeah. He actually, you see, you know, that jump where you see him jump and land on the, uh, and catch his hand on the side of the building, you know, you know, that's that scene. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's real. He's on, uh, he's on a harness. And what happened is he did that jump. It's not from the window. They did a jump between two other buildings. And they, you know, CGI to make it look like it's from a big high rise. Yeah. He, so he bent his ankle like 90 degrees and oh. it's in that shot. The shot they're using in the movie. If you look closely, you'll see Tom Cruise's foot just bend at an unnatural angle. And so, so he broke it right there and being the action star that he is, he finished the take, pulled himself up and ran off camera with a broken foot. And then they shut down production after that. It was done for months. They had to take a break for him to heal, but he finished the damn shot, which is such impressive dedication when your foot is broken sideways. You know what too? And in the grand scheme of things, a broken foot is nothing compared to some of the other injuries one could sustain while doing those stunts. Like (laughs) I would much take a broken foot over, you know, falling 200 stories off that Dubai tower in the fourth one. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe they did that. Oh, That's like too God. too crazy to be true. Anyway, going off, I just wanted to say really quickly, going sure. off what you said about the reoccurring characters, <clears throat> it's it's been a really interesting franchise in that regard because aside from um uh, um, aside from Luther, his his friend and who showed up in the first movie, like there's no, there's been no reoccurring character. There's been very few reoccurring characters up until about the third and fourth movies, and that's yeah. when the franchise really started to like, you know, that's when Simon Pegg showed up. That's when Michelle Monaghan showed up as his wife, and she's back in this movie as well. You know, and it, in that way, it kind of, I know this is a weird comparison, but this franchise kind of reminds me of the Fast and Fast and Furious. It does. Movie. So you're so <laughs> right. It, it it took until about like in the Fast and Furious movies, I guess that would be movie five, but in here would be movie three to like really establish a core group of 
a core group of people, a core group of directors and producers, a core group of characters who we are emotionally invested in. Like the first two movies are so different and so dissonant from each other in terms of tone and style. John Woo directed the second one. Yeah, and Brian Del Palma. Who's... Yeah, so really technically this franchise has only been going on for, you know, 11 years, but technically it's been going on for over 20 and that's, that's pretty crazy. Sure. Yeah. And I think this is this, uh, these recent films can be defined as like a JJ Abrams era because he, while he directed the third one, he's produced the next three as well. He's produced four, five and six, and he's involved in crafting the story and hiring directors and overseeing a tone and consistent story and characterization. So I think, you know, the count this as franchise number three that JJ or the first of three franchises franchises yeah. that J.J. Abrams has breathed life into and, and overseen as a producer, which is one of his strengths. He's still in charge of, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, he's still in kind of on on in charge of the new Star Wars trilogy because he's directing the next one, you know. I'm and sure Star Trek, he did two of those. He's still in Star Trek, exactly, and Man, that's that man is busy. <laughs> yeah, and I think truthfully, he's a better producer than director. I want to say, like, while his direction is very kinetic and engaging, he's the best at getting a bunch of good storytellers in the room and getting them excited about a certain universe or tone. And he has a lot more diversity of of genres behind the camera than he does in front of the camera. If yeah. that makes sense, so. Yeah, I'm excited to see this movie. I think I can count myself in the camp of definitely going to buy a ticket, would want to see it opening weekend. And I don't know. What do you think about it? I'm sold. I mean, like I said, even even just for Henry Cavill, I'm sold. Yeah, yeah. The cast is just such a draw with Rebecca Ferguson, oh, Simon Pegg, Henry Cavill, Tom Cruise. It's Alec Baldwin. It's, it's, it's going to be, be fun. Great. Well, cool. Thanks again for joining us for today's uh, analysis of Mission Impossible Fallout. Let us know what you thought about the trailer in the comments and if you're uh, looking forward to go seeing the movie. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.